All right, and here we have the chip counts. We're seeing uh, Joseph has uh, the chip lead with about a, f a quarter of the chips in play. So we can expect uh, Joseph, who's already known to be an aggressive player. Here he is with the chip lead at the big final table. We, we should expect to see him playing aggressively. I would like to see it. And uh, I did see him on the walk in here and told him he better not play tight. So uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. He uh, had aces and one of the players reshoved with ace five suited, which was a very standard play. But of course, uh, Joe had uh, aces that time. And here we are, king queen for Dapo and the hijack comes in raising. Mike's going to go ahead and fold there and over to Kristen. So 9-7 suited is the kind of hand that people really like to play. Uh, you know, it can flop nice things, but when you're out of position, the small blind facing a raise and also with only 30-something blinds to start the hand, um, it prudence says to that it's not really worth speculating. You don't hit quite often enough to justify that. Martin now making his decision. Uh, you'll see there's extra chips to the side of the stacks. They say time on them. Uh, at this final table, we are using the action clock by Protection Poker. That gives players 30 seconds to make a decision. And here is a flop of King 10-5. Bam, 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 right out the door. This could be a really bad flop for, uh, for Martin. Um, but the flop does go check, check. Uh, so so now both players have to be thinking that their top player is good. How is Martin Jacobson going to play this? Uh, if I'm in his seat, it looks like Dapo might have a pair of queens or maybe a 10 or some sort of hand that check back to control the pot that thinks it's good. So um, Martin's really, he's betting here for value. He's hoping to get called. And Dapo with his top pair and good kicker makes uh, makes the call. And uh, a complete brick on the river, basically. Outside of a hand like 7-4, um, not many hand or, or uh, yeah, that's, th that's basically it. Four deuce is not a very likely hand. So uh, Martin thinks he's good here, and he's probably going to bet here because he might expect a 10 or a pair below a king to check. So he's going to bet for value. And let's see if Dapo goes for a really light raise or just makes a call with his top pair. Um, which I would say is the more normal pay, a quick call, and Martin turns over his hand confidently, but no good. Big hand for Dapo starting it out. Wow, that's that's really big for him, and Martin Jacobson does not look happy. Uh. Wow, here we come back to Dapo with pocket queens. Queens for Dapo, comes in with the raise, stands at 320, so that's, that's something to notice, uh, and again, as these players are too good, but other, but other kind of players will use different sizing when they have a big hand. Uh, but Dapo going very consistent with his sizing. And Jeff with eighth jack. And Dapo has been one of the most aggressive players so far at the final table. He has mainly had hands. We haven't seen him really get out of line too much. But um, the players don't know this. And Jeff and with ace jack, he just calls in the small blind. So dodges a little something. He maybe could have re-raised that. But he, there he's going for a call. And... Will Kristen call here getting really good odds in the big line with King 10? Some may say a trouble hand. When I first learned how to play it, we used to call it Rockets because other people played it like it was Rockets so badly. <laughs> but um, here we are going to a flop. Queen's in good shape. Oh, really bad flop for Jeff because Jeff flops top pair, top kicker with his ace jack. Has to think he's good. Just has to think he's good. But Dapo has him crushed with the overpair. Kristen very likely not to lose anything more in this hand. This could be really bad for Jeff here. Dapo starts it out with a healthy continuation bet. 600,000. Very healthy continuation bet. More than half the pot. Ace Jack is going nowhere. Nowhere, ladies and gentlemen. That chime that you hear again is the action clock. Lets him know that he has 10 seconds remaining. Okay, and Jeff just calls. So that's very good for him because he could have lost more on this street. He's hoping for an ace or jack. King is arguably the best card in the deck for Jeff because it's a scare card. 
and for both players it's a scary card. So Dapo could slow it down and Jeff could think he's beat either way. How's Dapo going to approach this? Will he bet again? Yes, he does. I really like this. Uh, a lot of players get automatically scared off by the over card coming. But Dapo doesn't. Just going to clean million. Clean one million bet. About a 40% of the pot size. This is a hard fold for Jeff to make. I cannot see myself making this fold. I do not see it, and and if I'm in Jeff's spot, I'm just losing a lot of money here. And I think it's very reasonable to uh, lose a lot of money. I think it's sometimes that's just the way the hands line up, and it's unfortunate. Unless an ace or jack comes, there are some other cards that can potentially limit the action. A deuce is about as innocent as possible. Will Dapo go for a somewhat thin value bet? Or it's already a pot is huge. I mean, you don't want to be facing a check raise. It looks like that's it for Dapo with that smile. Yeah, yeah, he kind of knows. Uh, you see, there he is. He, he wishes he would have gone for the value bet now on the river. So if you go to learnwpt.com slash GTO, you can try it free today. You can actually try it free while you're watching this oh, live stream. Oh, I have to interrupt you because yes. Martin has moved all in with Jack-10 suited and Dapo has ace-queen suited. This could be the end for Martin Jacobson here. I don't see Dapo folding this hand. Dapo does call. Mike is going to fold the king-10 suited. Very relevant cards with the hearts and the 10. There's queen-10 suited out also. So... Dapo is even in better shape uh, with us having seen two tens being folded. Uh, we also did see some hearts out there, though. Let's see. Big sweat for Martin Jacobson. Can, can he stay alive? And Dapo here, he's already the chip lead. This would be really big to knock out the world champ, Martin Jacobson, and get those chips. Nine five deuce. Not much of anything. Uh, we do have the nine ten jack for the three card straight draw, the optimistic straight draw. A seven would be a good sweat card. Seven or eight, a bit of jack. Ooh. Martin just goes right ahead. Huge card. And uh, unless an ace or queen comes, that's six outs. As you can tell, fourteen percent. Oh, oh, and there it is, queen. Made for TV hand. <laughs> Bye to the chap, Martin Jacobson. Yeah, sure. Great player, of course, super professional. And I'm seeing double, Ari. I see two kings. Cowboys, there they are. One of our favorite hands to play. Chrissy under the gun in the hijack, opens it up. Is Joseph Queen Jack, two high cards himself. People like me and Joseph don't like to fold those kind of hands, but a very disciplined fold by him, they can get you in trouble. Oh, 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 the ultimate cooler, Jeff with aces in the big blind, just rocking away, rocking away. The only shot for Kristen is if Jeff just calls. He could easily just call here from the big blind. A lot of people really like to call with aces a lot of people really like to call from the big blind versus a hijack under the gun open but jeff three bets to 1.1 and this could be that this could spell the end for chrissy here aces versus king what a sick cooler five left in a wpt oh man oh, my heart goes out to chrissy in these kind of spots it's just so painful nothing you can do obviously jeff just loving life what a sick hat and there goes the four bet and is jeff gonna call or is he gonna shove these are the questions obviously he has the best hand so if he folded that would be really dumb but uh, <laughs> that would be like I some love how you, you <laughs> all options are on the table. Uh, yeah, always, always, always. I think they're playing war. Wasn't it and war? I could see him using a time bank here before shoving. People like to do that, and it does make some sense. Pretend like you have a little bit of a decision. Oh. 
looked like something came out of his mouth, but nothing did. We're just waiting for the two magic words. Just waiting for the two magic words. What a sick spot. Chrissy's hoping for the all-in words from him, but she's going to get a snap call by Chrissy. And she sees the bad oh. news. What a sick cooler. Now there's still an 18% chance that she can win this hand, you know. Crazier things have happened, but what a huge pot and sick cooler. And the rest of the table is really rooting for Jeff here. Not only is Chrissy one of the best players in the world, she's also the shortest stack, so they can all move up in payouts if she does bust. Jeff. Even a bigger favorite now, 92%. Only two outs for Chrissy. Will it be one of the kings? Did you hear me? It's not looking good for a 4 percenter if it comes. It almost came, but it didn't. It was a jack. Good game from Chrissy. Amazing run. I'm sure she's disappointed, but $140,000. Remember, this tournament costs 3300 to enter. So pretty amazing 45 times return on her investment. You do catch people lying sometimes in these spots, but it's a lot smaller of a frequency than, uh, than people in general. Sure. I just never believe the opponents basically. Right. Um, although personally, I just say like, I'd rather just not say most of the time I don't like go out of my way to lie. I just don't answer. Right. Uh, if, if I tell you, you could be, pretty sure that I'm actually telling you what it is, um, or I just won't say. You hear that, Matt Salzberg? <laughs> no, I did, I, did have, I did have the aces against you yesterday. Um, so, uh, Dapo defends his blind with ace-7 and sucks out on Mike's ace-10. Flops a pair here. Let's see what happens. Because Mike, with the initiative and position, does not necessarily have to lose this pot. But we've been seeing a lot of, oh, whoo, Ooh. Mike hits the three outer. What a beautiful card for him. And Dapo kind of realizing that he was most likely good on the flop. Goes for the value bet here. 500 into a million. Looking for some protection against all these draws. Look at the two different flush draws out there. All sorts of straight draws. Six comes, nine comes, jack comes are the most immediate ones. And but there's even a few more that potentially could uh, cool. interact with the board. And Dapo really wants a nine of diamonds to come or something that will slow down the action. But that's even better. Oh. Hits the two out of what a, what a crazy swing here. And you, you just can't see Mike really folding here unless Dapo goes just completely nuts. The, f the backdoor flush did get there. Dapo going 1.5 into two, into two. Very fat, big bet here. 75% of the pot. And Mike does not love this when facing another bet here. I mean, this is just going to be a really tough hand to fold by Mike. Can he get away from it? I could not in his spot. I mean, you check behind, you turn the top pair, top kicker. River is not that, it's a pretty innocent card. Not that bad at all. The flush did get there, sure. The board paired, sure. But the other flush draw missed. All the straight draws missed. And your 10 was most likely good to begin with. I mean, can your opponent be value betting a worse 10 here with this sizing? Like, maybe, maybe not. That might be optimistic. Mike seems like he's coming to the conclusion that he really doesn't beat very many value bets and his hand is more like a bluff catcher here. But it's like top pair, top kicker. How could you possibly fold top pair, top kicker? Dapo, we have seen a bunch of tightness to his game, though. Is he the multi-street bluffer type? We did see him check raise, though, as a semi-bluff. We have, we have, seen, we've certainly seen aggression. He is not like a super tight player, that's for sure. But these solid players, both solid players. Looks like we're going into the time extension. Oh. Yep, he called. That was a call and a great, great win for Dapo. 
Uh, big loss for Mike there. Dapo really separating himself now. Just a huge 10k buy-in. Um, always gets a phenomenal turnout. Approaching a thousand, maybe over a thousand now. Um, and if 10,000 is your neighborhood of comfort when it comes to tournament buy-ins, certainly one I recommend. Uh, also a lot of satellites do that. Um, but just, you know, it's it's one of your few chances to hit a really, really huge score in, uh, in tournament poker. And that's, you know, here we're playing for half a million, which is awesome, which is amazing <laughs> and huge. But, I mean, the numbers of five diamond just put this to shame. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, probably second is getting over a million U.S. there. Uh, whatever it is, I, I know nothing about that. I've never gone deep in that tournament. But um, guys like Dylan Lynn, you can ask him uh, how, <laughs> how he likes five diamond. Ooh, here we, here we go with... Uh, oh, this... Oh, wow. So Jeff opens the cutoff. And Mike in the big blind with ace queen three bets. Okay, so far so standing. But if Jeff shoves, what is Mike gonna do? Because Joseph is sitting here with four and a half million. So Mike doesn't want to call off. And Jeff doesn't really have a wide range for four bet shoving here. This is gonna be a really tough spot for Mike. You don't want a three bet fold ace queen four handed. You really don't. You really don't. Oh, and he doesn't. Oh, this could be it. Wow. This is a disaster for Mike. Disaster bumping into the queens of Jeff. And Joseph is rooting for Jeff to hold on. We got the whole Nova Scotia clan rooting for their man, Jeff, to hold on here. Will an ace come? Will the board go clean? Big, big pot, 16 million in there. Shout out to Lisa from Florida. Shout out to Phil from Sydney. Oh, we, we do have a sweat on the flop. Now they are all spades, which is good for Jeff. But Mike has now picked up a gut shot straight draw. If a jack comes, that's not a spade. And there it Ooh. is, a jack that's not a spade. So Mike goes into the lead, any spade, or an ace will chop it. A spade! A spade. And Jack oh. wins. What a roller coaster. And Mike, disappointing to lose that. Shout out to the Irish crew, Anthony Reedus. The power of the deuce on wow. the river. That wow. Was a, that was a sick run out there. Uh, Mike, out and forth for 180K for the longtime poker pro. Definitely disappointed. If you hear that noise in the background, uh, just off to the side from where we have our final table set up here is the tournament room and then the other area of the casino, which has just been full the uh, last couple days. So if you want to see some of those photos, you can go to our website and see those pictures. But the fact of how many tournaments and how efficient they are, um, I, I always feel bad because when I'm here, I'm working and I don't have time to play and it seems like such a tease because... Here we have a three bet going on. So we have Dapo opening the small blind for three times the blind, 600,000 with ace five. And we have Jeff three betting to 1.7 million. So about 2.9 times three bet with four. It's really putting ace five into a very bad situation with a raggy ace out of position. Oh, he goes for the four bet here. What instincts by Dapo. Seeing that Jeff pro doesn't necessarily have a monster hand, he puts on the four bet. Jeff does have the best hand, but with fours, when you're facing a four bet, and, Je and uh, the way Jeff reacted to that, I'd be highly shocked if he does anything but fault, uh, just giving away that he was not happy to see uh, the four bet. Um, that's, kind of, that's kind of the story. When you three bet with these medium strength hands and face a four bet, it makes it very, very hard to proceed. Well played by Dapo. That was hell of a read by him. Jeff with 10-7 suited on the bottom. The way he's been playing, he's going to be raising this. Joseph, not nothing. 10-3. Used to be known as Kitchens a long time ago for some reason. Uh... Dapo defends the big line with fours, very standard. Sh shout out to Billy from Lancaster, South Carolina. Five. 
Jeff goes for the seabed here. He does have the gut shot straight throw, so if an eight comes, he will have the nuts. He does have three to the flush. Dapo, though, still with the best hand for now. And that remains a so with an offsuit jack coming now. Dapo is a much bigger favorite, but it's another overcard for him to be worried about. If Jeff fires another bet here, one finds it hard to imagine that Dapo will call, but... Uh, <laughs> okay. When it's three-handed, it comes around quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and it's just interesting how that influences uh, play. The fact that that happened now, just it just changes the dynamic. Did you see me shuffling 1.2 as I stick it in there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Sick call, by <laughs> sick call by Dapo. Wow. I was not ex I was expecting the fold. He really has some very good instincts. And an offsuit deuce comes. Dapo is good with the fours. Will Jeff fire again? Pot is 4.5 million. Will Jeff fire again? And if so, what sizing will he use? 1.4. He goes very small sizing. Very small. It does not look like a buff. Bluff. Now, as you could see, the chips didn't come out too smoothly. Is that a tell or not? We don't know. Ooh, 1.4. Win six. It doesn't look like he's bluffing with that size. But he's but Dapo's getting very good odds to call this. He doesn't Jeff doesn't need to be bluffing too often for it to be a profitable call. At the same time, you hate to pay off. Dapo's gonna take his time. He tossed out that time extension chip, so he's gonna get another 30 seconds on the action clock. We got Harut, who still believes in Joseph to win this. And I believe it too. As long as he keeps playing his deuces strong, I like, I like Joseph Chad. It's a big pot here. You hear that tone in the background. That means he's down to 10 seconds. Oh, he check raises. Wow. He turns his hand into a bluff of the fours with the blockers to the straight. What a sicko. This is insanely sick. And Jeff is just kind of obviously going to fold this. Just so pissed off that it didn't work. <laughs> wow. What a sick play by Dapo. He's taking a step up from the pocket fours up to pocket fives now. Raises to 500,000 off the button. Because Dapo, so he, he goes up to two and a half times the blind. And what's Jeff going to do with King Queen? Just call Joseph now in a very interesting spot with 22 blinds. All options are on the table besides for fold. He's, he goes all in, he does go all in. This could be bad for Joseph. It could be amazing, but the way this hand plays out will determine how Joseph does in this tournament. Will Dapo call? If Dapo calls, that's not that bad for Joseph. If Dapo folds, will Jeff call? If Jeff folds, it's amazing. For Joseph, but if Jeff does call, that's a really bad shape. Okay, so the fact that Dapo calls is really good for Joseph, because now the king queen folds, and and Joseph actually has a legit shot. But with one of the queens missing, this is a <laughs> this is a big spot. Shout out to my good friend Jamie from Australia. Thank you for the kind words. Shout out to my old friend Go Socks Nick. Thank you for the kind words. Good to have you guys here. Big sweat here. Big sweat. What's going to happen? Jack right out of the door. Great flop for Joseph. Joseph, 91%. Just needs to dodge a five. Notice he would have gone ahead of the king queen also here. Big, big flop. Oh, the four. That was close. That was a really close, but close doesn't count here at all. And here comes the river. Big river, four percent or one of two fives. No, no it isn't. Man. Joseph doubles up and the crowd goes <laughs> wild. <laughs> yeah, he does double up either way, but one way you would have sucked out. Yeah, this definitely isn't Joseph's day. Whew. Big double up now. Now we have a game. Now we have a game here. 
So Joseph and uh, Dapper now are, are probably pretty close to each other. I think I still think uh, Joseph is third in chips. As we can see, he has 22% of the chips in play. But 49 blinds, this is no joke. Oh, Sublime, our, our old friend Sublime, Joseph Chong, going for it. He can smell it now, and he has the most experience out of these. He is the short stack, but with 49 blinds, you cannot count him out. Chess is considered a mind sport, and poker um, th is a skill game, and it's a mind sport in its own right. Um, oh, yeah. You were talking about mistakes that you make and you get better, and I always sort of look at it. I love the, the puzzle aspect of it. You know, it is incomplete information, and every action that you do, you're getting a little bit more, and you're putting that together. You layer that with what story are you trying to tell, and um, it's just a very, very layered uh, game, and it's one that it's relatively easy to learn on how to play, yep. and then to find the nuances of the game and move forward, it always just makes it, it's never, it's never dull, it's never boring. And Joseph just moving all in with his top pair here. This is actually a beautiful play. If he could see his opponent's cards, he very likely would do this because he doesn't need ace four, which has 30% chance of beating him. He does not need ace four to stay in this hand. If ace four wants to, he can put in all its chips with 30% chance. But this way, Joseph is putting the pressure on Dapo and he's making Dapper fold a 30% chance of winning hand or put in a whole bunch of chips with the worst hand. So a very good play by Joseph. And I think a lot of people might slow play Joseph's hand or call and hope to see a clean card. I like the way Joseph's playing. Love the way Dapper's playing though also. Shout out to Daniel from Australia. So that buzz indicated that the first 30 seconds for Dapo had expired. He is, you see, shuffling the time chip, so he gets an automatic 30-second time extension. At the end, once he makes his action, then the dealer will take that chip. Uh, the reason we do that, we want it to be player-friendly, so we don't oh, interrupt their thought. Oh, and he does call with the and ace there we high. Go. We're in for a big flip here. Joseph has a 70% chance of winning this hand, but 30% of the time, Joseph will be out. And we will be going heads up with Dapo and Jeff. 70% of the time, this is a new game with Joseph up to 13.6 million if he can win this pot. And, in, and he would be putting himself in a great shape to, be get, to get a heads up. That's a queen that doesn't help. Dapo is down to 16%. Ace or three. Ace or three only. Unless an ace or three comes, our friend Sabine will double up. Will Dapo do it? That's a clean card for Joseph, and Dapo loses a big pot. Joseph doubles up to 13.6 million. Dapo down to 11 million, still plenty of chips. Let's see how Dapo responds to this adversary because he has played a phenomenal game today. Let's see what da Dapo does open to three times the blind with King Jack in the blind. Jeff with a real hand at the big blind. One could see him three betting and never folding. And if he does three bet, I would not be shocked if Dapo shoves this. Dapo might call, Dapo might fold if he does. But is he just gonna call? No, oh, there's a three bet. 2.1 million, 750 to 2.1. So we got the 2.8, 2.9, kind of similar to, we did see this with fours earlier by Jeff and he then folded to the four bet. What will Dapo do? It's a big spot for Dapo. J Joseph's just praying that he shoves. He just calls. He calls with King Jack out of position. Big pot going to the flop. Very big pot. Four and a half million chips. <sighs> I'm nervous. Both these guys <laughs> should be nervous. Interesting flop here. So no one no one flops anything directly, but Dapo now has a gut shot straight draw. So in addition to his king and jack out, a queen could come. In addition to that, if an ace or ten comes, that adds some counterfeit out. Dapo's all the way to 42%, even without hitting anything on the flop. Very interesting. If Dapo does manage to find an aggressive play here, it will work. But... What will, how would Dapper respond to a check to to the continuation bet since Jeffrey three bet or Jeff three bet he can easily have an ace here. 
but as we see, he doesn't have to. 1.5 million C bet. That's a call. And the pot now has more chips than Dapo has left behind. So the pot is 7.5 million. And that is not a brick. Both of them turn a flush or Dapo with even more outs now. But only one card to come now. So you would need a king, queen, or jack or any heart. King, queen, or jack or any adds 36%. First act with 5.7 into 7.5. He might just shove. 3.6. He's betting more than half his stack here. What a brilliant bet here. Just putting eights right into the blender. What a brilliant bet by Dapo. Dapo is just playing above the rim here. And what's Jeff going to do? I mean, how can you continue here? What a sick play by Dapo. Another sick play by Dapo. Fold, yeah, yeah. Yep. Can't it. blame him. Dapo above the rim. What a sick, sick line by him. Oh, this is a great photo on Twitter at Butters95. Took a screenshot of uh, where he's watching the live stream. He says, I just finished my 10 hour shift now, enjoying a brew and some poker. Nice. Excellent. Nice, Thanks great. for joining us. We have an all in by Joseph Chong here with King Seven. Is this. This should not work. Ace Queen is going to call. This was a big shove by Joseph. For 40 blinds, this reminds me of something I would do. King seven suited though, 40% uh, chance of winning still here. Big pot here, Joseph will be the chip leader if he wins this hand, otherwise he is out in third. We got king seven suited against ace queen for Jeff. We got team Canada against the team USA of Joseph. Ace, six, three with diamonds, what a flop. What an amazing flop. <laughs> Max Sweat. Max Sweat for TV. Max What's Sweat gonna alert. happen? Dylan Lynn, shout out to you. You won WPT in Vegas last year. Five diamonds. Now you're here. Great job. Congrats. Go buy his book. Learn mixed games. Is a diamond gonna come? King, even more sweats. King seven or diamond for Joseph. If he doubles, he's chip later. No diamond, no king, no seven, and he's out. Big, big sweat. Thousands of dollars on the line. Huge pot. Who's gonna win? Big, big, big sweat here. Big river, sweat. River, And it's a diamond. diamond. Joseph is the chip leader. Double up. And Joseph Chong and his rail goes nuts. What a huge pot from Joseph Chong. Three bet shoves. 40 blinds with king seven suited. Beats ace queen. Wow. Big pot. We have a new chip leader. Joseph Chong is in the house. Joseph in the small blind with queen 10. Uh, I accept. 12. Well, I, accept. I wonder if the chip graphics were off for the reshove or they're off for now. Because Joseph's only at 12 million according to this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that would be interesting. Like uh, it's a little check. It's like a lock. <laughs> Maybe he did have less chips for that reshove, which would have made sense also. Sure. One million. One million. Doppel goes ahead and bets one million. So they both have a gut shot straight draw, but if a nine comes. Dapo will win with the highest straight all the way to the jack. And Joseph does not call with the best time with his queen high. Dapo bluffs off Joseph again. Dapo playing above the rim. Above. I think you would have preferred my hand to yours. So we're going to get some clarity here. Uh, should be able to look at the chip stacks and tell. I am a professional live tournament player. I should be able to see the chip stacks. Joseph does look on the shorter stack. Uh, we got the orange chips are worth 100k. So each one of those stacks are 2 million. I don't know. 
never again. Really? Oh my god. So we've got here, uh, let's take a look at this. Um, we've got... So we st they still have Jeff as... Yeah, we got mm. Jeff as 19.2. 19, 19 we've got Doppo as uh, 17 million. We've got Joseph as 8.6. Okay, here. We'll we'll double check yeah, on we're, this. We're a little we're a little confused about the exact chip counts, but um, either way here we got King Jack against King Jack. Love this, love this. Who's gonna who's gonna win? Looks like usually the aggressor is able to. Uh, if oh, so it was just limping in. No, it was a raise by Dapo and a three bet by Jeff, and Dapo will fold this time. Last time, if you'll remember, he called the three bet with his King Jack, but it's a little bit different of a spot. <laughs> Jeff was more likely to be light last time. Uh, you, Speaking you'd think of double, one is enough. Oh, Jacks, Jacks for Jack. Joseph. <laughs> Jacks for Joseph. It sounds like a and Dappa, lifetime movie. <laughs> <laughs> Dapo with King Jack in the button. We've seen him play King Jack both aggressively and on the more passive side. He does rate to be ahead of a button open by Joseph, but. Do you want to put in a ton of chips here? No, he doesn't. He just calls. And Jeff with eight in the big blind. You, he, you'd think he's going to squeeze this given, uh, given everything. He will squeeze this. Joseph will shove this. And Jeff is going to be committed here. Joseph is in a really good shape here to double up into the chip lead. Yes, he would be the chip lead. Joseph does take his time, then shove for 8.6 million. Jeff would need a call, 6 million and more. He's getting two to one with eight. Unfortunately, at this point, he's not loving it, that's for sure. But, um,. He's definitely not loving it, but you really cannot fold it anymore at this stage. You're, you're doing, you're, you're just doing okay. Even if you lose this, you still have chips left. Uh, he does call. He's not gonna. We did see a jack muck though. We did see one jack mucked. I folded a jack. <laughs> and Tappa lets oh us know. Oh <laughs> man. Oh, that's brutal. Joseph with the, the rue smile. Eights against Jax for the double up. This is to put Joseph into the chip lead for real. This is a big blow to Jeff here, unless he gets lucky. There are two eights left on the deck. What will happen? Oh, oh my! Oh, there's the eight. There is only one Jack left, though, as we know, because Dapo did fold the Jack. So Joseph is in really rough shot. So of course, a seven nine or queen could change it okay ten. so a 10 now will counterfeit jeff and give joseph the pot joseph needs a jack or a 10 there's two tens left only one jack three outs can he do it good game to joseph in third place what a hell day. of a run he played great of course bad beat on the final hand um in fairness, though, Joseph did just suck out with King-7 suited against Ace-Queen against the same opponent against Jeff. So Jeff takes a big chip lead into heads up, 26 to 18 million, you know, almost 60 to 40. But it's anyone's game for sure. So we have Battle of Hearts here. This could be a really bad cooler on the worst flop, on, a, on a certain flops. A bet and a call. Quick call by Jeff. Very quick call there. We haven't seen uh, that kind of action. It was more deliberate in the past. Oh, this this is a cooler flop here. Jeff flopping top air with the flush draw. And if he check raises here, I could see J J uh, Dapo potentially shoving. But will he check raise? It's a very strong hand. You don't want your opponent to just go away. He does go for the check raise. This could be bad for Dapo. This could be really bad for Dapo. If he calls and a heart comes, or he may just shove here or re-raise. 
This could be a quick heads up. What's Dapo gonna do? Only 2%. His hand looks so strong. George with a strangle. Uh, Jeff, I'm sorry, with a stranglehold on this hand. Dapo plays one of his time extension chips for an additional 30 seconds to think this through. It's very good. Deliberate play here, but what are you going to do? Your hand looks so much. And he re-raises. Dapo re-raises here to 6.9 million with 10.5 back. Is he going to be able to fold this to a shove? I don't see him being able to. This you thought I was bluffing? And Dapo talking Ooh, it up. From the Will Kasuf book of play. We've got speech play coming into play. Jeffrey, does he feel... He might actually not even feel so good. He's obviously never folding. But uh, he might think he needs to hit the hearts. He, yeah. might, he, might, he might think he's not good here. Jeff uses another time extension chip for the action clock to get another 30 seconds. Or is Jeff just loving life and is he just singing ooh la la in his mind? And just counting all the money till Vegas. He goes all There's in. The all in. And if Dapo calls, which I think oh. he will. There's he the call. 2% chance for Dapo. He is somewhat dead here. I'm drawing dead. He is somewhat no. drawing oh. dead here. He's, he's got a 2%er. There's, there's running queen 10. There's running jacks and running nines. He's going to need a 9-10 jack or queen to stay alive and have a sweat. Any heart and it's over. A king and it's over. Any 9-10 jack queen wow. for a hope. You really had it. He really had it. That was the worst hand you could Third be heart? up against, Dapo. And there it is. Well, Good game wow. to Jeff. Wow, what a win. Amazing. For anyway. Amen. Jeff. Amen. Jeff Hum is your new WPT champion, wins WPT Montreal at Playground, presented by Party Poker. Dapo's going to finish in second place. And these guys both played really, really good. I mean, this was a huge stage for both of them, maybe the biggest stage that they've been on poker-wise. And you couldn't tell. I mean, I was super impressed with both their plays. Dapo played amazing. Uh, so many out-of-the-box plays and really good play. And Jeff, same thing. He, he played really well. He took advantage of his situation, uh, was chip leader for a lot of play, didn't take any high risk spots, and uh, just worked his way up there. And now he's a WPT champion. There you have it. Well, from Montreal, we want to thank you for joining. If you're looking to play some poker, go to WPT.com for our upcoming events, Party Poker Live for their upcoming events. I'm Sam Cariotti alongside Ari Angle. We thank you so much for joining. Yeah. We'll see you next time on the World Poker Tour.